Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today I'm going to talk about how to use control templates in WPF to give your controls an entirely new visual style. So I'm going to start with a simple project here. This is just a file new WPF project, and it gets created with a main window XAML and a main window CS. So I'll flip over here to the XAML view, and you'll see that I just have a grid in here and nothing on the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button to my form here. And I'm going to give it a width and a height so that it doesn't fill the whole screen, but that it shows up in the middle here. And I'm going to give that button some content so that we have some text on the button. And let's make it a little bit wider so we can see all of the text. So now, if I run this, what you'll see is I have a basic button in WPF. And when I click on it, you know, I get some styles and I get a, uh, a click event. And let's wire up a handler to the click event so that we can see that happening. So I'll just come in here and say click and tell it to go ahead and create the method for me. And I'm going to put just a simple message box. Into the click event. Now when I run it, and you'll see that we have the main window here and I click the button and we get the message that says you clicked me. So now what I want to do is I want to give this button a completely different visual look. I don't want it to look like a normal button. What I want to do is actually make it look like, uh, let's say, an ellipse. So I can leave all of the settings I have in place, the height and the width, the click, and the content can all be set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the button's control template. So I'm going to open up the button tag and inside I'm going to say button uh, dot template and I'm going to set that equal to a new control template. Now you can see what happened in the visual designer. I've got a box around where the button is supposed to be but you can see that visually it's now blank. There's nothing showing in the designer and that's because I've just told WPF to replace the visual tree for my button and replace it with what's inside my control template which as of right now is nothing. So what I'll start with is, let's just say a width, uh, sorry, an ellipse, and let's give it the same height and width of the button. And then let's give it a fill of light blue. Now you can see the visual designer up above shows a light blue ellipse, and it's in the same position as our button before. We don't have the content showing, um, but if I go ahead and run this, what you'll see on my window is now I have a light blue ellipse in the middle of the screen and when I click it, it says you clicked me and I'm still getting the click event. So this is still a button as far as WPF is control concerned, but we've replaced its entire visual tree. So let me walk through those steps one more time and I'm going to use a tool called Snoop to show you how this process works. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the template that we just set up. And now, as soon as I do that, you see the designer changes back to a default control template for WPF buttons. And I'm going to go ahead and run this again. You see, when I click the button, I get the message box, you click me, so everything's still wired up. Now I'm going to use a tool called Snoop uh, that you can download from the internet if you just search for Snoop WPF. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and what's called Snoop this application. And what the Snoop tool does is it attaches to our running application and it shows us the visual tree for our application. So let me resize some of these windows here so we can fit it all on the screen. Okay, now I'm attached to the application in Snoop, and if you press Control and Shift, you hold those two keys down, and then move around in your application, what you can do is highlight the element in the application. You can see a little red highlight shows around it. So, and what Snoop has done is now move the visual tree down to the element that I've highlighted. So you can see here's the grid, and uh, let me get let me get the XAML in view here behind so we can see kind of all, all three of these things in context. So you can see the grid in my XAML behind here and then a button. So here's the grid in the visual tree, here's the button, and then notice all of these elements that are inside the button. There's the button Chrome, a content presenter, and then inside that is a text block. So there's actually three visual elements that make up the default control template of a button in WPF. It's an element called button chrome, and then what's called a content presenter, and inside the content presenter is a text block. So that's the default control template for a button in WPF. It consists of three visual elements inside the visual tree. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop running this application and I'm going to put our template back in place. And this is our ellipse template that we had before. I'm going to go ahead and run the application again. And then I'm going to snoop the application again so we can see how the visual tree has changed now that we replaced the control template. So again, control shift over the element. And now if you see, we've got a grid, a button, and the only thing inside the button is the ellipse. So not only have we changed the look of the button, but we've actually modified its visual tree and we've removed all of those elements that were there before. So we don't have button chrome, we don't have a content presenter, uh, and we don't have the text block inside. We just have an ellipse, but it is a button. So when you click on it, you still get the message to pop up telling you that you clicked on a button. All right, and that's it for a very basic example of how to change a control template in WPF.